out, Star Wars fans. Matt here from the SWTS with another unscripted breakdown and review of the Ahsoka series, in particular, Episode 4, Fallen Jedi. But before we get there, remember, spoilers are coming, because this is going to be deep and detailed, all right? Here we go. Okay, so to start things off here with the review, I just have to say, like I did last night on IG at StarWarsTime.show, that Episode 4 of Ahsoka was the most Star Wars of Star Wars since the dawn of Star Wars. It was fantastic, my friends, from start to finish. If you've been having issues with Ahsoka through the first three episodes, Episode 4 is going to clear that block from your brain because it is everything George Lucas, Dave Filoni, anyone that has worked on Star Wars has wants a property to be. It was fantastic, like I said, from start to finish. It had a lot of drama. It was. Uh, it provided an edge of your seat feel that I have not really experienced in much of Disney's Star Wars, especially the TV shows. I mean, maybe since season one or two of The Mandalorian, definitely not in Ahsoka so far. But Ahsoka Episode Four, I just had that feeling in my gut, like, oh boy, some big stuff is gonna happen within each scene. I felt that way. So yes, I was crawling off my seat, as they say. I also have to say that I, I found this to be the best portrayal of Ahsoka yet. It felt like we got some of those those uh, emotions we've all been wanting to see from her as we've been slightly complaining that Rosario's performance, while not her fault, has seemed a bit tempered, a bit too stoic at times. That wasn't the case in this episode. I mean, hell, she even smiled <laughs> once or twice. And then you could see, you know, when she thought Sabine was dead, the anger came through and she kind of lost her cool. And that's why she was defeated by Balin. It just, it, it felt like Ahsoka, or at least the one I think all of us were expecting. There was more personality to this performance. It felt a bit more true to the character and for the situations she was dealing with. So... A plus to Peter Ramsey. I don't know if he directed Rosario differently or what, but it was noticeable in terms of uh, just how Ahsoka felt in episode four here. I also have to talk about the lightsaber battles. I mean, my goodness. I mean, we're talking some of the better to be featured in the franchise. They just, they, they had a great pace to them. They had a great story to them, a great look and feel. You know, having the dark backdrop of the Cetos Forest was nice to really make those lightsabers contrast. But they just, they felt methodical, especially the fight between Balin and Ahsoka. In my mind, that is exactly how George Lucas wants lightsaber duels. Not so much the, the quick, fast twitch stuff we got in the prequels, but the more samurai-esque, master v. master, the slow pace, uh, the, the methodology Balin and Ahsoka used to size each other up before they began striking. It was a ballet. It was a dance of death. Just beautiful stuff. So, I mean, I, I can't gush enough about this episode, but I will leave it on this, the last really... You know, kind of high point for me before I get into the top moments is is Balin again. I mean, Balin kind of took a backseat in episode three, but thank goodness in episode four, Ray Stevenson, R.I.P. my man, was able to shine again with this character who, quite frankly, my friends, is the most interesting villain in all of Star Wars. He's not all dark. He's not all light. You, you can tell he knows some things. The way he talks to Ahsoka, it's almost like he's been following her. Has he been time traveling? What, what's he talking about? Like he, he's doing all that he's doing and working with Morgan and going to this new galaxy for the greater good. What does that mean? And he, he's got morals. He's got ethics. It's, he's just, it's so fantastic, the mystery that this character is shrouded in. And I really do think we're in for a reverse heel turn. I, I At first, I thought Shin would be the one turning back to the good side. But now seeing how she is force choking people, I'm thinking Balin's probably going to take some issue with what Thrawn, Morgan, and the rest of the group are going to want to do in this new galaxy. But but don't sleep on him. I, I It almost feels like he has access to the world between worlds. He just knows some, some things based on what he said in this episode. But Nick and I will go into that more next week on the Star Wars Time Show live stream, 5P East on YouTube. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the top moment, moments as there were plenty. I'm going to start with the 
seeing Sabine and Mando form for the first time. Oh my goodness. I mean, the whole opening battle was great with Sabine, Ahsoka, and those um, HK assassin droids and just random thugs, but it was Sabine in particular. We finally got to see why this character was, was asked to train to be a Jedi. I know she's seen kind of like uh, mopey and a bit ignorant and stubborn so far, but that's Sabine. You gotta remember, she is a Mandalorian. She is a badass in her own right, especially when she's got the armor on and blasters in her hands. So it was great to just see her, you, you know, kicking butt, taking names in her her true form and obviously ahsoka looked like a badass too slashing people's down or people down so that's definitely a top moment number two i'm going with hera's rebellion i've loved every moment hera has been in you know because she is channeling her rebel spirit again she bucks the system here after senator ziono and the wuss chancellor mothma did not grant her request to help her friends so I love that she goes rogue. She channels the old Phoenix Squadron call signs. That's great. We get to see the ghost. Carson Tiva shows up. Just awesome stuff here, especially if you're a fan of Star Wars Rebels. All right, sticking with the theme with this episode, I told you the lightsaber battles were great, so obviously they're going to have a lot of top moments, and I'm going with the Woods Duels, plural, next. Yes, the fight between Sabine and Shin, and obviously the fight between uh, Maroc, the smoke monster, who could be the eighth brother resurrected by Morgan, who knows, and obviously Ahsoka. Again, just awesome-looking visuals. They were lightsaber fights that... that felt like poetry especially the one with ahsoka and Maroc. you could tell she was just toying with this guy she was the supreme force user and just like obi-wan did the darth maul on tatooine she just kind of sat there and waited for the dark side user to lose their cool and attack one slash see you later let out that chipotle burrito pal because you've been holding it clearly for too long and then the Sabine and Shin fight just can, kind of continues their dynamic. They're foils of each other, perfect foils of each other. One is a little erratic but strong in the Force. The other, again, is, you know, kind of headstrong but weak in the Force. And I love when these two get together and how this time with her armor and some of her Mando gear, she was a little bit more of an equal match for Shin. Okay, moving up next moment, obviously the Balin fight with Ahsoka and really just the, the drama behind it, the slow lead up to it, their talk, you know, Balin trying to feel her out, possibly getting to her mind and then just getting right to it and how they would shift their stances very methodically to size each other up. It just, to me, like I said, George Lucas, if he knows what's going on and he watched that, he had to have been smiling because that is everything I think he ever wanted his Force users to be, or at least look like when it came to sword battles and duels. That was as samurai-esque as it gets. It was beautiful. Again, you get more of the Balin mystery. How does he know so much about Ahsoka? Why does he care so much about her? What is he doing for the greater good? Why does he want her on his side? Just fantastic stuff in this scene. And sticking with Balin, again, the guy's an all-star, but the next top moment is how he just masterfully manipulates Sabine Wren into essentially giving up the map and joining his side. Which we know, so she can go find Ezra, but Balin knew that too. When he reads her, you can see he closes his eyes, reads her, and he instantly knows how to handle her and get his way. So it just shows you that... He doesn't have to be your typical <laughs> villain and overly forceful and wordy. He can get what he wants by sticking to his word, just like he did there. And like I said, the fact that he called off Shin and is a man of his word, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to change and probably pay for that change. But we'll see as the season plays on. He also gave us some cool lore there with Sabine's family. We, we learned more or less that... They more than likely blew up in the Purge that we've heard about from the Mandalorian. And it seems like Ahsoka did not allow Sabine to return home to help. So, again, well, how does he know so much? Why is he trying to separate these two and cause problems? Balin is the man. All right, to finish out the, war, the um, top moments here, how can we not talk about the introduction of the world between worlds into live action, getting the snips drop, Seeing the dude, oh my goodness. All right, a lot of us who've been paying attention, we kind of thought Anakin was being saved for episode five, so it was just, it was a huge surprise. 
it was awesome to get all these treats early to see this world between worlds and start the process what is going on did ahsoka die is she a force ghost is anakin a force ghost or is he from a different timeline i'm going with their force ghost and she is dead or at least almost dead and therefore her her force spirit has kind of passed into the plane and and uh, these days it seems force ghosts can interact with the world between worlds which would make complete sense considering they essentially live in a world between the real world so whoa mind-blowing stuff there at the end to wrap our top moments okay just a a few easter eggs and references here and it's hard to even say easter eggs at this point in time because there there really aren't many but we'll start with the and we knew we're going to get it from the trailer but the heir to the empire drop again this is a direct reference to how thrawn became a thing in star wars back in the day with timothy zahn's heir to the empire novel up next we finally get to see the ghost for real i know it showed up a bit in episode one but now we really get to see it it's piloting again we got to see tiva nice call back to the mandoverse timeline but the real treat here is when they call her phoenix leader a clear nod to their call sign from star wars rebels hey that we've had a few other nods to indiana jones in the series so far but we got another when ahsoka goes to take the star map off and it burns into her hands I know some people are like, hey, maybe it will just be like Indy and they'll be able to use the burns to to find their way. I don't think that's the case. Clearly that star map needed activated to show you the path. So I think it was just a nod to that moment. And then really, I mean, references for those that did not watch Star Wars Rebels. Ahsoka is in what is known as the World Between Worlds. It's essentially this portal universe that Force users can use to manipulate time so we're gonna be in for some stuff next week uh so things i've heard you might have read some spoilers you never know but uh i think they're gonna use the world between worlds quite nicely and it's gonna be done in a way to kind of show ahsoka that no matter what she has done or is going to do she can never change her past present or future you know anakin was always meant to fall she was always meant to follow the path she was meant to follow and I think the world between worlds will will explore that through some alternate timeline type of stuff. So strap in, my friends. And finally, another great reference back to Clone Wars. And hearing it for the first time from live action Anakin. Hello, Snips. Woo! The feels. The feels. All right, everyone, if you like this content, hopefully you'll give us a subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. We also do a podcast, so go give us a follow. Check out the links in this description or head to StarWarsTime.net. Remember, there's always time for Star Wars time. And if you listen to the Star Wars time show, the Force will be with you always.